Live from Dallas, Texas, this is the Cotton Bowl Classic post-game special with Northwest News Sports Director Todd McKim. Well, we'll be going to Todd McKim down in Dallas in just a second. This wasn't the way the uh, Ducks and their fans hoped to start the new year. They were down in Dallas at the Cotton Bowl. They got off to a good start against the Buffaloes, but then they got caught in a stampede and they lose the game 38-6. to Now, as we said, our Todd McKim is standing by live down at the Cotton Bowl out on the field. Todd, the weather was bad. The game didn't turn out very well. Anything positive? Well, there's always tomorrow, I guess. You know, the rest of 1996 can't be as bad as day one, I guess. Yeah, just a, a terrible performance by the Ducks, and you have to give a lot of credit to Colorado. This is a top-10 team. All week long, Oregon said if they win, they would go into the top-10, but the Ducks not quite ready to make that ascension quite yet. Colorado proved they're a very good team. Their defense maligned a bit during the course of the season, Walt. Their offense got all the credit, but today, that Colorado defense was the difference in the ball game, forcing all those Oregon turnovers and even scoring as well, that one big touchdown by Marcus Washington. Yeah, all week long we talked about the key, where the key matchup was the Oregon defense against Colorado's receivers, but Colorado's defense just took Oregon out of its game plan. It looked all day like Tony Graziani could never get a feel for what was going on. He was not able to throw the ball downfield. The Ducks had some success early in the ball game, obviously, with the turnovers and the field position. But when they couldn't score touchdowns in their first two opportunities inside the 30-yard line, you really had to wonder if they were going to be able to win this football game. After today's game, the Ducks have not scored an offensive touchdown in the last nine quarters of the season. Last quarter against Arizona, the entire game against Oregon State, and then, of course, today, they get uh, no offensive touchdown. So uh, the offense let them down just a little bit today. The defense, I thought, played about as well as you could expect. Now, horrible weather conditions, and it seemed to get worse as the game went on. Was that the way it was down there? Well, I think what happened was is when there was rain early in the game, the Ducks felt right at home. But then when it began to snow, Colorado felt right at home, right in those Rocky Mountains. Obviously, when you get behind like the Ducks did in that ball game, and you have to try to throw the ball, the rain isn't as big a factor as the wind is. And it was really tough today for the Ducks to throw the football. Tough day for Tony Graziani and his receivers. Okay, now the Ducks, uh, they always have the locker room closed for a while after the game. Uh, we'll get some post game as soon as things open up. Uh, we're going to talk to some of the players a little bit later on, but uh, right now they're in the locker room. Uh, Colorado's just received the Cotton Bowl trophy, and we'll have some live reaction as quick as we can get it to you. Okay, thanks a lot, Todd. While we wait for the uh, players to come out, why don't we take a look at some of the highlights of the game. As Todd said, the weather, well, it uh, was great yesterday in Dallas. In fact, it was 60 degrees. Today, the high temperature was at about 5 in the morning when it was in the 50s. It was in the 30s at game time, raining, and they had threats of snow. But Oregon got off to a great start. Opening kick, Ricky Whittle takes it at the 10. He bursts up the sidelines and goes 63 yards all the way down to the Colorado 24, the second longest kick return in Cotton Bowl history. First play after the kick return, the Ducks throw a little wrinkle into the game plan. Kevin Parker with the option pass. Now, it's incomplete, but it showed the Ducks were going to throw a little of everything at Colorado today. They had to settle for a field goal, however, that was one of the keys to the game. The Ducks couldn't put it in. Josh Smith from 25 yards out, make it 3-0. Colorado's first series, Oregon gets another break. Rich Rule steps in front of the pass from John Hessler, picks it off. That led to another field goal, and it was 6-0. The Ducks got another gift on Colorado's next possession. They complete the pass, but they fumble, and Oregon recovers. However, this time the Ducks can't get any points out of it. Gang Green's defense was tough, especially in the first half. Fourth and one. They get stuffed. Asher Bailey and friends as they stop Colorado at midfield. But just before the end of the first quarter, the Buffs almost strike. They go deep, and the pass is complete all the way down to the two-yard line. First play of the second quarter. Hessler on the option. He takes it in, and Colorado has the lead at 7-6. Now the Ducks, well, they got off to a great drive on their first possession in the second quarter. Ricky Whittle running over people. But here's the key play of the game. The Ducks had the ball on the inside the 10. Tony Graziani's pass is picked off, and it's returned 95 yards for a touchdown. That made it 13-7 Colorado at halftime. That's the longest interception return in Cotton Bowl history. And halftime, well, the weather just got worse and worse. 
Oregon band members couldn't even get their ponchos on. It got so bad. Colorado took it right at the Ducks. Herschel Troutman right up the gut. He goes 55 yards all the way down to the Oregon six-yard line. Two plays later, they throw for the score. As Hessler finds Matt Leifus in the back of the end zone, and it was 20 to 6. And in the third quarter, the Ducks, well, they just kind of killed themselves with turnovers. Graziani fumbles it. Colorado recovers. That led to another score, made it 26 to 6. And then Graziani fumbled it one more time. Ducks turned it over five times in the game. They convert again. This time, a great catch. That made it 32 to 6. 19 third quarter points by Colorado. That was a cotton bowl record. And they went on to win it. The final was 38 to 6. Colorado over the Ducks. So the Ducks end the season. They end the season 9 and 3, but not the way they wanted to finish. Well, when we come back, we're going to go down to the Eugene Hilton where they had a big uh, party watching the game today. And also a little bit later, we'll go back to Dallas for some post game. Stay with us. Well, the Ducks had about 12,000 fans down at the Cotton Bowl, and when you watched the game on TV, you could tell they were making a lot of noise. But not all the Oregon fans were able to make it to Dallas. In fact, there was a pretty big party down at the Eugene Hilton this morning, fans watching the game on the big screen TV. Now, our Tim Joyce was down at the Hilton earlier, and he's standing by there live, in fact, now with a report on how things went. Tim? Well, Walt, uh, let me tell you, things were kicking earlier, but it's pretty dead now. Actually, it's very depressing here. It's a sad end to what was an excellent and incredible season for the fighting Oregon Ducks. It's definitely a ghost town right now. And what started out as, as a really jubilant, joyous occasion this morning just grew and grew and became pretty sad. As a matter of fact, most fans ended up leaving well before the fourth quarter was over. But uh, right now, I've got two Duck fans die hard. They were pretty wild throughout the entire game. They join me right now. We've got uh, Susan Healy. And of course, thank you very much for joining us. And come on in, David Goodman. Come on in. So tell me, you know, you stand here through the whole game. What went wrong? They didn't score enough points to win. <laughs> but, you know, I've been a Duck fan since 1978, and they're going to win again. And I'm going to come back again. And this place is going to be full. It's going to be rocking. It's going to be rocking. It's going to be David? rocking. Well, I'm here, but my voice isn't. The Ducks were great. I thought Ricky Woodle was awesome. Um, we just had too many turnovers. Too many turnovers? Uh, yeah. What about next year? I think we're going to have a great season. A lot of our, our players will be back. Um, we'll have Graziani back and uh, and um, Graziani and we're gonna win next year we're going to a bowl we're gonna win and this we'll place back. is gonna be full you'll be interviewing us but this is gonna be rocket all right well thank you very much You're it uh, it is very clear that uh, these lone fans and of course the duck calls that go with it uh, had wished that uh, the uh, Oregon Ducks could have taken home that Cotton Bowl trophy and kept it on this side of the Rocky Mountains and uh, while there's going to be a huge party tonight, I'm sure, in Boulder, uh, we'll be drowning our sorrows here in Eugene. Uh, reporting live from downtown Eugene at the Hilton, I'm Tim Joyce for Northwest Sports. Thank you very much, Tim. That was uh, <laughs> pretty quiet down there, but that's kind of the way it goes, I guess, when you lose. We'll, uh, we'll have to find those people next year after the Ducks do win a bowl game. Well, when we come back, we're going to go back down to Dallas where there are still people in the stadium, our guys at least, and they're going to talk to some of the Oregon players and coaches about the game, so stay with us. Well, 38-6, Colorado was the final at the Cotton Bowl. Let's go back down to the stadium where Todd McKim is standing by with some post-game. Todd? Thank you, Walt. Of course, a very disappointed Oregon sideline at the conclusion of the ball game. Our Pat McGilvery was able to talk to some of the players before they left the field. The Ducks lead the field at the Cotton Bowl, obviously disappointed with the way they played today, but also unhappy with the way Colorado finished this game, throwing the ball to the very end, throwing the the fake punt pass. We're going to see if we can track down a few players, see if they'll talk to us. Oregon misses out on an opportunity to win 10 games for the first time in school history. They finish the year at 9-3. and three. We'll work our way to the center of the field where the, where the players are exchanging pleasantries. Reggie, Reggie, you lead the field. What's your, what's your thoughts on this game? Uh, just didn't come out like we wanted to, but we'll be back next year to a, another bowl game. Gang Green seemed to be able to do the job when it had to, but you were put in a bad position with turnovers time and again. Yeah, definitely. We had our backs against the wall a few occasions, but the mark of a good team is to overcome adversity, and we just didn't do it today. You're down only seven points at halftime. What was said at the set at halftime, and 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 what what went against you early in the second half? Uh, just little uh, minor mistakes here and there. 
We just got to turn those around next time. All right, thanks a lot, Reggie Jordan. You're here with Mark Schmidt, who played a whale of a ball game, although, it, you know, with the final score the way it turned out, it just you won't get the credit that you normally should after playing it as well as you did. This game was not won and lost on the front line. No, it wasn't. We played it. We played our butts off defensively. Offensively, kind of stuttered, but you know when they stutter, we got to pick it up even more. Uh, Colorado's a good team. Uh, it just seemed like we couldn't get anything going, any breaks for us in the second half, and that was the determination of the game. Big plays and turnovers. Five turnovers yeah. by the Ducks, and you gave up a couple of big plays when you seemed like you had them stopped. That that was the game. I mean, if you take away the big plays, the uh, the fumbles, the interceptions, I think we have a whole different ball game. A whole different ball game. How does this wrap up your season now? Obviously disappointed with the way things wrapped up. Can you can you sit back and look at, at the entire season? Uh, it's going to be hard to look at the entire season. I think for the seniors, it's going to be hard. They're leaving on a loss. You know, they've made this program go. As for the juniors and underclassmen, I think it's going to put a little fire underneath us, especially when uh, Newhausen went for that fake punt and they scored on it. I mean, that's just fire to make us better. we got to push ourselves harder. And we're going to come out here, and we're going to prove it next year, too. And we're going to do it next year. Okay, we'll what, what were the feelings on the field when that play happened? Um, kind of like, kind of shocked. I was kind of shocked. Troy was very mad. I mean, it was all mixed emotions. We, were, we, were, we just couldn't believe that he would do that. That's, I mean, it's chicken. It's chicken. They were up 32. You know, we stopped him. They should have just punted the ball, but, you know, he wanted to get his second team players in. I could see that, but... I don't know. We were we were pretty pissed off, and as you can tell, we had a couple of late late penalties, you know, personal fouls, and we just we kind of lost it. We lost our whole grip on the game, and just didn't go good for us there. Well, it's an understandable finish to, to that kind of act yeah. by by Colorado. Yeah. Thanks a lot. All right, take care. Mark Schmidt with a heck of a game from the defensive line position. Let's come over here. Alex Molden being interviewed. We'll sneak up in here and and see what he has to say. Touchdown pass, but uh, Alex coach wants you in now. All right, that's where we change the policy. That's the end of Alex Molden. We'll come over here and uh, see what other Oregon players are down here at the end zone. They're all being rushed into the uh, the tunnel. That'll be it for right now. We'll uh, toss it back to Todd and hopefully come back with more post game interviews and a reaction to a 38 to 6 final score in the Cotton Bowl. Back to Todd. Well, tough one all the way around for those Oregon seniors. A tough way to go out losing like this, but they've had a great career nonetheless. When we come back, we'll have a live interview with Bill Moose, the athletic director, so stay with us. <laughs> 